um, well, just educating myself, you know, I feel like, and uh, just also trying to, um, yeah, being completely honest with yourself about where you are, what your knowledge is, you know. Um, so I read a lot, you know, and I'm not afraid anymore to, to read things that I might not like, you know, because they might reveal some stuff about myself that I don't like, you know, and now I just dive straight into it right now. Okay, I want to know if I'm ignorant about something, if I do something wrong, I really want to know. And on every level, you know, that's something that has become really important over the past uh, few years now. Um, you know, because because same, you know, it's it's really, you know, when you grow up like in an environment that, uh, I don't know, that doesn't tell you straight up, okay, you're doing this wrong, you're ignorant about this, you know, you start to not really question some things that you should be questioning. So uh, I just read a lot now, you know, and that's how I, I just learn more things about the world and about myself that are starting to really help me on a daily basis. So that's the best tip I can give is to read and just educate yourself. You know, there's plenty of knowledge out there now. Welcome to the Learn Squared podcast, and I'm pleased to introduce today's guest, Stephen Coleman. Stephen is a matte painter, concept artist, and designer who has worked for the likes of ILM, Axis Studios, Amazon, and many more. He's also an esteemed Learn Squared instructor where he teaches our brilliant 3D matte painting course. In this episode, enjoy an insight into Stephen's journey as a touring drummer to one of the most sought after digital artists within the industry. Learn how Stephen got his big break and where he envisages his career moving forward in this ever changing creative landscape, plus much more. Buckle up and let's go. Okay, let's do this. Um, hey everyone, welcome to the Learn Squared podcast. And today we have the awesome Stephen Corman. Hey, Stephen. Hey, well, thank you very much for having me, man. Pleasure. Glad to be here. Um, so it's been. I mean, we've actually last spoke in person a few years ago, one of the industry workshop meetups, I guess. Is that like 2018, yeah. 2019? It's been a few 2019, years 2019, I think. It was the demo day industry workshop. Wow. I um, mean, I know yeah, like one, of, the, one, of very fur, yeah. one of the very last, I think, uh, live events I went to. It was maybe TH, THU after that, but after that, the world pretty much shut down. <laughs> yeah, everything's literally, the game's been paused for most things. Um, yeah. Some have even been cancelled completely um Mm -hmm. like i mean for me that was the same here that's the last kind of public event i went to in fact i've never been to the industry workshop events uh Mm -hmm. but you've been to a few i guess right you've been to as many quite a few of them yeah 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 i mean you know the very first one i ever went to was when i was just starting my um i guess journey or career you know in art so that was an actual industry workshop in 2014 Mm. and uh and since then yeah i've been going to a lot of those you know because I had such a, a good time at the very yeah. first event I went to, and also the, the ones that followed. So I think there was a, a bit later, there was like a, the, the IFCC in Croatia, yeah. and also, of course, THU first in Portugal, then in Malta. So, um, yeah, I mean, those were such, you know, uh, great experience for me. That's where, you know, uh, I got to uh, to make new friends and mm. And just such good contacts in the industry that are, yeah, I kept on going to many of those up until, well, they stopped due to this COVID situation. I mean, like before that, what was your um, kind of like way of interacting with art and the community like prior to those events? Well, but that was actually my first introduction to the community. Mm-hmm. It was uh, by going to this event in 2014 mm-hmm. in London, you know, because I really, you know, I started to uh, to work on my skills, you know, with the goal to, to work in this industry mm-hmm. uh, in 2014. So uh, okay, so same year. Yeah, so I mean, I guess at first, yeah, I started to connect myself to people through Facebook mm-hmm. um, and those Facebook groups, you know, like Daily Spit Paint back in the day, and right. a bunch of other groups, you know. So I got to make, I guess, the first connections like that, and uh, then I started to meet people in real life through, through those mm-hmm. events. So, yeah. Um, similar for me, in fact, like my first time in industry workshops was 2016. So a couple of years after yourself mm-hmm. and it was a similar kind of journey for me where it was, that was the area I decided that I'm putting all my eggs in this basket and mm-hmm. just dived in, um, I guess, you know, head first into the deep end yeah. and haven't looked back since. Um, what, so before that, like what, what actually 
what brought you to that point where you decided that you wanted to embark on this industry? Was it something that you'd always had an yeah. eye on or was it something that you kind of discovered and thinking, hey, um, this is something that I actually never knew I wanted to do, um, but now mm. I do? Yeah, I guess it's it's definitely a, very much a mix of both, actually. Okay. You know, because as far as I can remember, I've, all, I've always been, you know, into drawing and mm. films, basically. Those were like the two main things I really loved when I was a kid. Uh, so movies and also drawing, you know, and I was yeah. even writing a little bit, you know, so I was oh, cool. very much attracted by the, the you know, the, the movie industry, filmmaking and stuff. But, you yeah. know, uh, for many reasons, it's just that's something I never pursued until very late in my life. Uh, I think it's just because I never could figure out exactly what I wanted to do. You know, at some point I wanted to be a, a director, at some point yeah. I wanted to be an actor. But then I also really liked art and uh, I knew also loved VFX. So when I was mm -hmm. a kid, I used to watch all documentaries about films, you know, yes. um, but ILM and all, what those guys were doing back in the day when yeah. the whole CG thing appeared uh, with Jurassic Park and the films that followed. So I've always been very much attracted to that. But I guess the best way to explain it is that just I grew up, you know, and it was a very different time back in today, you know, uh -huh. when it was time to to sort of choose what I wanted to do. Uh, I guess I just didn't know. So that was back in 2001, I guess, when I got mm -hmm. out of high school. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Internet was just starting, you know, and uh, I had no way to figure out, you know, what I wanted to do in films. If, if it was even possible, you know, I couldn't figure it out. So I guess I just told myself, yeah. It's just something I, I will just like, but probably will never work on. Mm. So I will just keep going on with my life, you know? And yeah, I just did other things, you know? And um, I guess it's just that, you know, times change over the years and I change as well. You know, yes. I think I gained much more confidence in myself. And I started to to think that uh, if I really wanted to do something that seemed a bit impossible, well, actually I could, you know? Mm. And uh I, you know, also had been, you know, working with Photoshop a bit over the years yeah. just to do some album covers because I wasn't into music for a long time. So no. I was designing flyers, you know, for shows and album covers. So I was just manipulating photos, stuff like that. Um, and I had gone to school just for a year or two uh, in computer graphics, even mm -hmm. though I learned nothing. It gave me some kind of basis, you know, yes. in, in Photoshop and stuff like that. So... And uh, I guess it's just that after after many years, you know, around 2013, something like that, you know, this urge to to start creating art again, you know, started to come back. I guess exactly mm. like when I was younger, I just wanted to create stuff. I just didn't know exactly what, but uh, mm. I knew that I was starting to get excited again about films, you know, and VFX and stuff like that. And uh, I guess it just clicked because I started to learn about matte painting mm -hmm. and the effects. And I realized, oh, those guys are actually using Photoshop and they're sort of manipulating photos to do matte paintings. Mm -hmm. And I felt, wow, this is something I feel like if I push my skills, I can actually do, you know? Yes. Um, you know, and a, a lot of years before that, so when I went a bit to art school, uh, I had not a really good experience. Uh, I just felt like art wasn't for me. It wasn't good enough. And mm -hmm. also couldn't find a way, as I said, to, to, um, to do art in film. That's something I didn't know how I could do. And, um, but yeah, back in 2013, I sort of realized that I could do that. And uh, th there was a way, you know, I started to learn about filmmakers. Like, I don't know, Gareth Edwards, for example, who did like Godzilla. Yeah. Uh, before that, it, this, it did his uh, first feature film all by himself. And it did yeah. all the effects by himself. So that really excited me. And uh, so, yeah, I just decided to, to jump into it, you know, and I started to work really hard. That's basically it, really. Mm, nice. Um, so many things I can relate to um, about your journey with my own. And nice. yeah, yeah, Gareth Edwards was a um, similar thing, like we just mentioned. Um, obviously, he's known for the films that he's known for now, but he first mm -hmm. came to my attention like he did with himself with Monsters, purely yeah. because, <laughs> not because of the film itself, but because of what it represented. This was one yeah. man making a film doing yes. the vfx all by himself and it became successful so yes it was like um and a bit like i guess with music as well although like because you and i know you posted up a fair bit as well like what how, how was your music journey because you've had a bit of um yeah. um t put, invested in some time into that as well right mm -hmm. yeah um yeah i mean you know i guess that as i said when i got out of high school then it was time to to choose a path, I guess, you know, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. And I, I only knew that I liked art and films, but I couldn't see any avenue in that, I guess. And I also really loved music and drumming. 
Hmm. So I guess I sort of chose that, you know, um, and that's what I pursued for a very long time, you know. Uh, but you know, same. I guess the world was very different back then. Mm. I feel like if I was starting my music journey now, I I would knew how to to make it successful mm. much more than I knew back in the day. Because uh, first, you didn't have internet, social media back in the day, so it was much much harder, I think, to get your name out there mm -hmm. and your music out there. And also, uh, to be completely honest, I just didn't have the work ethic that I mm. have now. Uh, I didn't have the, you know, I was born and raised, but like everybody in the mindset that, yeah, you wake up, you work eight hours and you mm -hmm. chill, you go to bed. And um, even though you always hear, yeah, you got to work really hard. You no, know, it just doesn't click for some reason mm. until you, you just realize it yourself. No, I got to work 16 hours per day, man. <laughs> if I want to be a good drummer, I got to work more than two hours per day. I got to work yeah. eight hours on my drumming skills per day, you know? And that's something I just never realized, I guess, you know. Uh, I mean, I, st I still worked hard, you know, in music. I became, I guess, a decent drummer. Uh, and as I said, I think that uh, if I knew back in the day what I know now about myself, about how the world works, uh, I, I feel like I could be much more successful now mm. if I put the work into it. Um, so, yeah, so I just pursued music. And, and you know, it, it, it went well for the, the most part, part you know. Uh, I got to do a bunch of tours, you know, in Asia, so I went sweet. to the US, to many countries in Europe. So that was all good. But it was just never to the point of making any money, obviously. Ah, okay. Um, as I said, you know, yeah, also because it's it's because of two things, I guess. Because that's, as I said, the world has changed. You know, back mm. in the day, you really need, needed to rely on uh, labels to get your music out there and to sell yes. the records. And that's how you would make money and buy touring. But I guess now, exactly the same way as it is for art, you, you get many ways of making money in music, you know, uh, yeah. by some merchandising, uh, creating software for music, you know, giving drum courses, uh, do YouTube and stuff like that, you know. And uh, but that's that wasn't around at all when I was making music, you know. So, yeah, I mean, it's and, very uh, much like um, the digital art realm as well, if you think about it. I mean, the, the, yeah. the pathways are the same. It's just a different medium. Right, like, like you mentioned, absolutely, absolutely. YouTube and That's how stuff. I feel about it. Yeah, even though I would say it's probably more difficult for music because uh, there's one thing that digital art or art has that music doesn't have is that immediate access to it. Mm. Uh, if you want to get your music out there, well, people need to invest a bit of time to listen to your stuff. You know, right. while when you see an image, it's just, it's just it takes half a second. If you see the image, you know if you like it or not. You know. Yeah, that well put. Um, that's totally true. And it's like, it's quite interesting as well, because, um, you know, like with, you mentioned with your, your music journey, like I've dabbled mm -hmm. a bit myself, not like, I can't play any instruments for shit, but, um, more, mom was more like a, a, a typical bedroom producer. I just picked up a bit of music <laughs> software and managed to figure it out. Um, and, but then like, you know, the creative process is the same in both. And it's quite interesting. You mentioned about the the nine to five example like you you, mm -hmm. you build up a career you build up skill set to get a job to have that yeah. stability to earn your bills pay your bills mm -hmm. sorry um yeah. but then when it comes to the creative pursuits a nine to five is clearly unless you're like a everything just clicks for you immediately um mm -hmm. it's never enough it's like with a craft yeah. you have to put double triple it's almost got to consume your whole life mm -hmm. right and yeah. um you've done Two two things. So it's in case of like obviously the digital side, um, the creative side uh, in terms of art, and obviously the music yeah. side as well. Um, yeah. In terms of your like journey up to that point when you um they mentioned with the music and stuff, if because mm -hmm. you mentioned a point that about um, I guess the the money had not become to the point where it was sustaining itself. If that mm -hmm. had happened, if things really took off, do yeah. you think art would have not? become what it is for you today you think you probably would have let it go um well i think that if let's just assume you know that i wow. had, had made it in music i think what would have happened is that i would have started to have the same urge to create uh visual art again yes but it would probably have been like um second thing you know mm. uh, that i would have done maybe one or two hours per day something like that right. you know so i don't think yeah yeah that's probably what would have happened, I think. And is that what's happened now, but in the in the flip reverse? Um, so in case of like music? <laughs> I guess so, yeah. yeah. In a way, you know. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to lie. For a long time, I didn't want to do music anymore, really. Mm. 
Uh, I mean, I always wanted to drum a bit, but yeah, I guess I I had enough of it for a little while. Right. But now, now I kind of yeah, I kind of want to get back to it a little bit. You know. Uh, Do you think there's something to the fact that sometimes when it comes to things like creative pursuits, a big chunk of it, like you mentioned, a lot of it was the enjoyment you had as a child, mm-hmm. like as a kid learning it. Um, yeah. Do you think when the element of enjoyment goes out of it, or maybe adding the element of making it something that's feasible commercial, um, mm-hmm. do you think that ruins it sometimes or does it actually, could it, it make can. it better perhaps? It probably can. It doesn't have to, but it probably right. can, I guess, yeah. But um, but yeah, it, it's a tricky balance mm-hmm. to find, I guess. You know, you definitely have to take into account the financial, financial side of things. Yeah. But I still think that art is still the most important. You really got to dedicate most of your efforts, I think, in just mm. doing the art that you enjoy. That's what I believe, really. And, you know, I had this realization uh, very uh, not long ago at all, actually. Uh, you know, at first, you know, the first years when I got into this art game, it was all about just doing art and the best I could. Mm-hmm. Uh, really to be the best I could and then hopefully get the jobs I wanted to have. But I, I was never thinking about the financial aspect mm. of things. You know, that's something that started to happen very recently when I realized, well, I can actually make a, a pretty decent living with mm-hmm. this. And then uh, what can I do more now? Should mm-hmm. I invest this money so I get into business and stuff like that? So, uh, and those thoughts have started a bit to consume me, I got to say, for right. the past two years or so. But then, you know, the people thing happened with NFTs, you know? Yeah. And I was like, wow, you know what? This actually just proves me that uh, you just got to keep doing what you like doing and do it yes. the best you can. And then good things will happen sooner or later, I think, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, uh, yeah this whole thing about people actually didn't motivate me to try to make more money like you think it would have done. No, actually, it just motivates me to, to uh, do more art and do more personal art. That's all, really. Yeah, I yeah. To- totally get you on that. And I agree. It's less about, it wasn't a case of like when it happened. I mean, like it's, it's, I guess it's like a seismic event that's happened in, in mm-hmm. this art realm, in the financial yeah. realm as well, but also in like a digital art realm. Like we were always, yeah. I guess you could say a lot of people kind of have successful careers and still continue to, it's still kind mm-hmm. of been like shoved in a corner. It's its own thing. Um, and the fact that you could see um, somebody make the kind of money that like a top professional athlete would or you know like mm-hmm. a, a very successful musician an actor and what have you yep. um mm-hmm. it kind of put into perspective that okay there's there's more success that can be gained from just focusing in on yourself um yeah. than trying to you know like prop up say another institution's vision and all that kind of stuff like another you know, corporate side of things mm-hmm. um and it wasn't a case of like, oh, I, I wouldn't mind taking a piece of that. You know, like, for mm-hmm. example, his most famous sell was that Christie's one, I think 69 million. Um, yeah. But, you know, it's more a case of like, oh, so people are willing to invest in an artist's journey and creation. That's what it was, right? It wasn't a case of yeah. like, this is Beeple's artwork. This is like Beeple's journey as a creative. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that, that, is, that is quite interesting. Um, so would you say that moment like before that moment what was your mindset then because you mentioned obviously it was kind of consuming you a little bit um was yeah, that something that was kind of getting a bit out of hand or was that something that was kind of just de- derailing you a little bit or like uh, what was that what was going through your mind at that time i think it was derailing me a little bit you know because mm-hmm. i had come to a point where uh, i had enough work you know to live mm-hmm. so i had work coming in like on a regular basis and i was making a good living Mm. And, you know, the way I function, um, if I don't have like a clear goal, a uh, clear vision to work towards, too, mm-hmm. I have a hard time, you know, um, I don't know, staying focused, you know, and, and just having like enough motivation to get out of bed, I guess. You know? <laughs> and uh, I mean, I was still doing my work, but it was starting to get to be uh, a bit like a nine to five thing, actually. Right. You know, I was just working, working, and then I was just chilling, you know. Uh, playing Fortnite with my friends <laughs> and stuff like that, you know, and uh, and uh, and yeah, but I was also searching for a thing to do next, you know. Mm-hmm. I was like, what should I do next? You know, I feel like I should invest the money I have, but how should I start to learn more about stocks? You know, yes. crypto. Should I start a business? You know, 
what should I do, you know? And I was starting to get involved into things, I guess, that I, I didn't really enjoy, but that I felt like I had to do um, if I wanted to, to become like, let's say, yeah, in the back of my head, I wanted to be, I had this sort of goal to be like financially free, basically. And, yeah. and that thought had started to consume me a mm. little bit. Because you know, also the way I function, you know, once I have an ID that is starting to to uh, to take a lot of place in my head, it quickly, you know, I just become obsessed about it, mm -hmm. and I start to feel bad if I don't pursue that, you know. And um, so, yeah, I was in the state of not exactly knowing how to get there, but uh, I was also like, okay, I, I need to do something, you know, to work towards that goal to be financially free, you know, because I don't want to have to work. On, for other people, projects on my life. And by the way, there's nothing wrong at all mm -hmm. uh, with that. It's just that for me, you know, uh, I really want to find a way to do my own thing mm. and make a living out of that, you know. So I was starting to find ways of generating income mm -hmm. um, in other avenues than art, basically, you know. Um, and then when the, but I wasn't really enjoying the process, to be completely honest, right. you know. So I was a bit conflicted about the whole thing, you know. Mm. And uh, when the Beeple thing happened, I was like, whoa, okay, yeah, well, <laughs> you know what, I got to really, you know, just keep doing what I what yes. I love most. And I'm not saying that, I, uh, that I'm not going to, you know, pursue other ways, you know. Uh, not, I'm not saying that I'm going to stop being interested into business and, yeah. and being financially educated. That's not what I'm saying. But um, it just put, put me back on the right track, I guess, you know. Mm. To start focusing in about my personal art, I guess, you know. I think it's yeah. quite common with creators in general. It's like once you're not creating or focusing on something that's done in on your own terms. Mm -hmm. And yeah. not like in a stubborn way, more like, you know, like say, you know, like how you would like to create the things you'd like to make and also mm -hmm. how, how you'd like the money you'd like to make as well. It's like when that's not happening, um, yeah. it, it can really and like you explained with yourself, it can throw you off and then you're trying to like mm -hmm. fill that void or try and find out what it is. And then, you know, it does take you on a different path and it can take you away from that original yeah. thing that was working for you. Um, exactly. Yeah. And I think that's what, exactly what happened for me. I was mm -hmm. starting to, to get away a little bit uh, from what I said I was initially going to do and what I actually really wanted to do, you know. Yeah. And you primarily operate or have always operated as a freelancer, is that correct? Yeah, I would say most of my work has been freelance. You know, um, I did uh, live and work in the UK yeah. a bit on and off, you know, for let's say two years. So I was in London first, mm -hmm. then I came back to Belgium a little bit to freelance. Then I went back for a whole year to Scotland where I work in a studio as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but now I'm back full time freelance, you know, and I, I feel like at this stage, that's how I, I want to stay at this mm -hmm. stage. And do you think the financial aspect is probably heightened more because of the the freelance life um well you know it's i i think you know uh you you can probably make more money you know uh, as a freelancer yeah uh, i'm not saying you will but i think you can because you know if you work for a studio and if you plan on working for studios all your life you can pretty much plan out exactly how you're going to earn all your life and you mm -hmm. can sort of estimate how much you're going to end up with when you want to retire you know exactly yeah and i guess i now i'm you never know you know something might happen you might work 30 years for the same company that company might become huge and you might end up like ceo and become like <laughs> a millionaire you never know you know yeah. but um as a freelancer at least you don't have any limitations i guess yeah. and uh and yeah so but that being said you know i'm not obsessed by money and wealth it's really not sure, about yeah. money it's just about i guess being financially free that's what it's all mm -hmm. about to me and what that means depends on everybody you know mm -hmm. uh you can be financially free for with maybe 1k per month you know it depends on your lifestyle i guess you know good point yeah yeah very true yeah. um mm -hmm. and i think financial freedom is at least for myself as well that is something that is probably my i guess overall financial goal um because yeah. that personally speaking like what money does to people and has done to people and all that kind of stuff and i don't want to go into that realm but it just like it really puts me off on that sort of things like i um yeah. i'm not sure about yourself um but i think it's quite common with creatives in general it's like there's just something like 
there isn't there isn't that feeling of like lust for money right or that lust yeah. for more um mm-hmm. but then at the same time we're all very aware of how much things cost you know like how much gpus cost and software and having all the best things so that also equally costs um yeah. so it's just getting to that point where those things are not a headache and then yeah. the mm-hmm. you know like what money does to you that isn't a headache and that that the perfect space in between right yeah yeah but i think you know uh, it's all about also what you do with that money you know yes uh, I, I always say you know if you earn a lot of money and if you feel a bit ashamed of it but then be proud of the way you spend it mm-hmm. so uh, as far as i'm concerned i'm just really happy now to be in a position where i can give back you know to my parents nice. and family just through small things you know while well, i'm happy you know with christmas now to come with gift for everybody which i yeah. was never able to do for a very long <laughs> time you know? Because, you know, uh, uh, during all those years I was doing music and little jobs, you know, I, I never had more like maybe 1,000 euros on my bank account mm-hmm. for like 15 years. I'm not yeah. kidding. So, so and, and by the way, my fami- family was not poor. I'm not saying uh, a sub story here where I come from like a poor background, not at all. You know, I came from a, uh, you know, a, a normal family with decent income. But personally, I never had mm. uh, a lot of money because I was not earning a lot and was never really working towards that goal at all you know anyway so so yeah um, as i said also the the money is something that sort of took me by, by surprise a little bit you know i was never expecting to earn decent money and i was never yes. working towards that so so yeah so that's quite interesting in that sense because i guess going to school and growing up um and even the generally that what society tells you is to to earn quote unquote a good living right um, mm-hmm. And that can also have various degrees of like how, how much that should actually be. Um, mm-hmm. But then you also mentioned that you pursued a career in the digital arts world at like VFX and all the mm-hmm. other areas that you've worked in. Um, but at the same time, the money wasn't the motivation. Um, no. So um, I guess the point I'm trying to, or the question I want to ask is um, because obviously now, like that you also mentioned as well, is that the the money aspect did decide to like you know you you thought more about it and what to do with money and how that's going to affect you going forward and stuff so yeah. like when did that like how have you been with money overall like is that is that something that has always been just something that you had to learn like about how to ha- handle money manage money manage finances or is that something that kind of came naturally to you um when you started embarking on your journey uh, we well, you know this is something very recent once again, you know, because uh, when I was, you know, I haven't, I've not been in the, in the industry for, for a very long time, you know, mm. so uh, it's only been like two years, maybe that I guess serious money has started to come in. Right. And, uh, and of course, uh, at first I was totally ignorant about how to handle money, you know. Mm. I had money, I spent it, you know, it's just really dumb, you know, <laughs> <laughs> if you read like any kind of book about financial education, the first thing you read, like, save money, <laughs> you know, <laughs> stop spending uh, all the money you earn right away, you know, yeah. so, uh, so I, I did a, a few mistakes, you know, I mean, I, I don't regret them, because, mm. yeah, now I, I got a cool car, I'm pretty happy about yeah. this, you know, so first thing I did when I, I started to have, like, good money, I bought a car, because <laughs> I never had any decent car for right. all my life, I was just always driving the shittiest car ever, and it didn't bother me, I was just never really interested in into a good cool yeah. car. Uh, but that's the first thing I did. But right after that, uh, I realized, okay, that was a bit of a stupid move. So now I start to think about what to do with money. So yeah, I just started to educate myself. And uh, the more I read about it, the more I realize how ignorant I am. So mm-hmm. I'm still very much in the process to learn that. But uh, so it's definitely not something that comes naturally for me. Right. Um, because it's a subject I totally avoided for all my life up until yes. very recently. Yeah, I just was never interested at all, you know? Yeah. So yeah, it's still very much new to me and I'm still learning right now. Yeah. And to anybody coming up or maybe starting to embark on that journey and that's kind of mm-hmm. maybe bothering them or maybe they're not even focusing on it. It's like completely, you know, in the in the blind spot where they're not even thinking about that. Mm-hmm. What kind of advice and tips would you give to those people? Well, uh, I guess, uh, yeah, I mean, try to, I'm not saying you have to dive wholeheartedly into it immediately but um i would say uh start getting interested into it at least a little bit right now because uh you might not know that you actually want 
uh, to know how to handle money, to save and be financially free. Because I thought I was not interested in that for a very long time, but now I am much more because I have sort of clear goals I want to achieve and I know what money can do, you know. And uh, so, yeah, so try to at least, you know, if you're not at, at all interested in that, well, maybe make an effort and try to, to read a little bit about it because you might get interested into it, you know, and try to think about the future as well. Because, mm-hmm. you know, that's also one thing, you know, for a very long time, I was completely uh, incapable of <laughs> seeing myself uh, more than 10 years in the future, you know. Okay. Uh, I was never thinking about where I would be, what I would be when I'm like 40, 50, 60. Right. Uh, and now I'm starting to think about it because obviously I'm getting older. So all of that is much more real to me now. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, and also see people around me struggle right now, especially because of COVID, you know, Yeah. Uh, because they only have one source of income and that income has stopped. So yep. um, they're in serious trouble right now. And mm-hmm. I tell myself, you know, okay, I, I don't want to be in that situation later. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, if I have maybe later family or kids, you know, well, I want to be able to provide for them no matter what happens. Uh, I want to keep being able to give back also to my parents and other causes and stuff like that, uh, that I give back to. So, yeah, I mean, that just gives me purpose, you know, to, to keep learning about that. And, uh, if I had, I have one advice is just, yes, yeah, start getting to it sooner than later. You don't have to be like a financial expert, but mm-hmm. I think some financial education uh, is definitely a good thing to have. Mm. Um, and regarding, um, like, say, future now, is mm-hmm. it still like a no more than 10 years or is it kind of padded up <laughs> for a few years on it now? Uh... I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, so yeah, when you yeah. think about the future, like, like, yeah, how do you is feel it? about the future? Is it something like uh, more so about, yeah, let's just see what happens as long as I've got yeah, what I need to work on question. right now? Or? It's a good question. And I feel like I'm very much in the, still in the process of figuring that thing out. You know, I mm. figured some stuff out, you know, every day, like as I said, the financial side of things, you know, I feel like that's at least one step further, you know, mm. like, the idea of being financially financially free one day, so that's at least one thing I can work towards too. Um, so that's sort of a goal I have. So yeah, if ten ten years I can be financially free. That would be amazing. So it just that's a goal I have, and uh, somewhere where I see myself in ten years. But so, other than that, um, yeah, I'm still trying to figure out other goals than that. You know, I mean, the goals I have right now are uh, not really art related. I guess you know they're more like about health, you know, well-being yes. and stuff like that, you know. When did the well-being um, realm start coming into your thinking? Uh, that's a good question as well. Uh, yeah, I guess here we dive more into personal stuff. I would say it's, you know, it's uh, probably, it's been maybe like two, three years, you know. Um, you know, I, I guess I was never worried about my well-being because I thought I was doing well for a long time, you know, <laughs> but then, you know, things start to happen, you know, and uh, start to question yourself about a lot of things, you know, and like many artists, you know, I struggle, uh, I struggle with depression and stuff like that, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, I realized it's something I need to take uh, a lot more care of than I, I used to do, you know, I, I used to neglect that completely because, you know, I thought I didn't have any problems, you know, I thought I was mm-hmm. okay, you know? but, you know, the, the older I get, you know, the you know, honestly, the more difficult life can become, you know, mm-hmm. and, uh, and you realize that you're not that much in control of some stuff you thought you were, uh, you know, and um, your health also, you start to realize that you need to take a lot more care of as you get older, you know, because mm-hmm. when I was younger, and then I was like, drumming all day long, you know, I was burning a ton of calories, you know, and I was young. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, but now that I get older, you know, I got, like, I'm pushing slowly 40 now. And, um, you know, now that I sit most of the time, you know, it's much more difficult to take care of my health, you know. <laughs> and all the same, I see what, how health can decline over the years. I see it in many people around me. So I realize also that's one thing I need to take seriously now. So, yeah, so I guess it's been like two, three years that now I'm really starting to realize, okay, now I've got to really start to take care of myself a bit more, you know. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's, um, it is quite 
a tricky one and an important one because again, similar to yourself, the journey that I've had is when you're younger or even when you feel like there are no quote unquote struggles, you're just Mm -hmm. oblivious to the fact that there may be things going on just because your body has more tolerance of it. You assume that, okay, there's nothing actually causing any issues Mm -hmm. or whatever. Right. Um, but even for myself, last few years has been like quite a battle to Mm -hmm. a understand what's going on and then B Mm -hmm. trying to get out of what's happened or going on. Um, And that's something that I've taken steps to kind of resolve. And I seem to have like a a pathway to kind of be able to master that and keep it under control. Um, yeah. But then, you know, like I, I'm fast approaching, I'm the turning 35 in a few months. So I'm like fast approaching 40 myself and, and beyond, yeah. hopefully. Um, so, you know, like kind of laying the groundwork so things don't fall apart in the future is something that's definitely playing more and more on my mind. Um, yeah. But again, back to kind of like what you gave with the financial tips, what kind of tips or um, things that have helped you overcome certain things regarding well-being and all that kind of stuff? Um, well, just educating myself, you know, mm. I feel like, and uh, just also trying to... Um, yeah, being completely honest with yourself about where you are, what your knowledge is, you know. Um, so I read a lot, you know, and I'm not afraid anymore to to read things that I might not like, you know, mm. because they might reveal some stuff about myself that I don't like, you know. No, I just dive straight into it right now. Okay, I want to know if I'm ignorant about something, if I do something wrong, I really want to know. And yep. on every level, you know, that's something that has become really important over the past uh, few years now. Um you know, because because same, you know, it's it's really you know when you grow up like in an environment that uh, I don't know that doesn't tell you straight up, okay, you're doing this wrong, you're ignorant yeah. about this, you know, you start to not really question some things that you should be questioning. So uh, I just read a lot now, you know, and that's mm-hmm. how I, I just learn more things about the world and about myself that are starting to really help me on a daily basis. So that's the best tip I can give is to read and just educate yourself. Mm. You know, there's plenty of knowledge out there now, uh, YouTube, Instagram, you know, yeah. uh, audio books, you know. So just just try to learn about everything, you know, not only financial things, but everything, sure. you know, I guess psychology. Any, you know, anything and, that can give you an advantage, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So putting you on the spot a bit, fast forward to, let's say, X number of years in the future, and mm-hmm. you've achieved your goal of having complete financial freedom and every, yeah. everything's working nicely, everything's flowing nicely. What do you see yourself or what would you like to be doing at that point in time or in that situation? Yeah, you know, it's... I think I just want to keep doing art and get better at it, you know? Yeah. Uh, that That's really what it is, you know? I just want to keep doing what I do and get better and just have more projects to do. You know, as long as I have projects you know that um that pop up in my mind that i want to do that's what i what i want to keep doing you know mm. until the day i die probably you know that's really what i want to try to do yeah so and- I, I feel like my art is probably going to keep evolving you know um maybe i want to dive into like films maybe i want to combine the music side of things with yes. it you know as long as i keep creating i feel like that's my main drive just creating stuff with it. Yes. I mean, that creative energy is like super powerful. And I take comfort in the fact that as a creative, I guess you don't need a retirement plan. You just need, because you can do this until yeah. your last breath, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so that, on one hand, that's quite positive because you have hopefully plenty of time to finish and create more and learn new things. And who knows what tools will be available in the future. Mm-hmm. Um, but then also you don't have to worry about you know, like what would you do um, when maybe you stop working in a professional sense and mm-hmm. having to do it just for like, you know, money and bills and supporting families and whatever else, mm-hmm. um, you know, like it, it's something like, I guess like artists and creatives don't really have to, they don't really worry about so much about what would they do with themselves because they're yeah. really doing what they want to do. And it's, I mean, like you look at people like Spielberg and Ridley Scott, they're like either <laughs> into the eighties or approaching the eighties and they're still yeah. out there making things like, you know, mm-hmm. people our exactly. age. Yeah. So movies, you're a big fan of movies, like you mentioned. Um, yeah. do you have 
But what are your favorites? Because there's never really a favorite, right? So like, there's always like a few at a certain point in time. So at, as of this time right now, um, what would your favorite go to movies? Uh, it's probably gonna be extremely cliche, but mm -hmm. uh, I always find myself having like the same list of ten movies, I guess. And it's very cliche. It's like Terminator Two, Aliens, Alien, you know, Blade Runner, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, Predator. I love Predator. You know, an incredible film. Uh, you know, I gotta add to that also a much more recent movie, uh, Mad Max Fury Road, probably. So good, yeah. Uh, I love Contact as well from Rob Zemeckis, one of my yep. favorite sci-fi films ever. Um, and Jurassic Park, obviously, you know. And so all the big, I guess, you know, sci-fi and blockbusters, probably. I know it's a bit cliche, but um, those are all the films, I guess, that really shaped my taste for art when I was a kid, probably, mm -hmm. that made me dream when I was a kid. And that's yeah. probably why I keep going back to those. I can probably add back to the future about uh, to those films. Mm -hmm. So. Those are very much, you know, um, escapism films, you know, yeah. it's all about fun, you know. I mean, it doesn't mean that they're not, you know, smart and they you know, don't have, like, interesting subtext, but they're very much, obviously, very popular blockbusters. But I yeah. got to say, those are the films that I keep going to. Uh, but there are plenty of other movies that in totally different genres that I absolutely love, of course. Yeah, I mean, like, there's always, it's like food, right? Although you might mm -hmm. have your favorite food that you'd always still would eat mm -hmm. different dishes and flavors and what have you. Um, yeah. So like you, you mentioned earlier that movies are probably what got you into art. Um, mm. Like, What was it about it? Was it just trying to recreate your own worlds or was it wanting to make your own worlds or just really explore um, the worlds that you saw? Uh, it's very much both. Actually, you know, when I actually, you know, when I got into art, so 2013, 14, yeah. uh, my clear goal at that point was actually to be a director, to mm -hmm. make a film. And I was just going to use um, art and VFX to do that exactly like Gareth Edwards did. Yes. yes. Uh, he was really my role model at that time. So it's just that things changed over the years. You know, I started to struggle a bit more with the, the filmmaking thing. You know, mm -hmm. I was struggling. Oh, okay, this, this was my goal. So why am I not doing it yet? Why do I want to keep doing art? Uh, and I mean, so just images instead of why do I keep wanting to get more into 3D, you know, 2D and stuff like that. So I, I did struggle a bit with that, but now I'm much more comfortable with that, you know, and it's just completely normal to keep, you know, questioning yourself like that, I guess, mm. you know, uh, if you have a goal, it doesn't mean that's, that's where you're going to end, but, you know, at least having one will help you discover more things about yourself. Yeah. So yeah, when I started to get into that, what I really wanted to do is film. So right from the beginning i saw that uh, in my mind the art that i was doing was very much like doing a film one image at a time you know mm. um, and that's why i think if you take a look at my work i feel like it's it's sort of cinematic like the aspect ratio is always very much cinematic and i always yeah. try almost always try to emulate film looks that i like and uh i like doing also fan art from all those movies that i like so so yeah um i was very much trying to uh recreate what I saw when I was a kid and also doing my own stuff as well, you know, in the same kind of vibe. Mm. I mean, like your work definitely is 100% cinematic in terms of as soon as you look at it, almost mm. every piece, at least up on your art station is cinematic. Um, and that probably answers one of my questions I was going to ask you anyway, it was about like, is that intentional? And you obviously just answered that like hundred percent is. Um, mm -hmm. And not, not only does it look cinematic, it looks, like legit these could be um stills of like in existing films or films that have happened um yeah so being a director like what why directing like what what was it about it was it just to kind of was it harking back to the the films that you just mentioned that were like inspired you growing up um or yeah. is there other aspects about directing that really appeal to you um well i just like you know the um, you know i feel like what i do now so the the visual side of things doing images is just one part of the of the, the film movie equation you know and I, yeah. I just but i still love movies because they can just convey so much more i guess i mean depends on everybody but much more emotions as a whole mm -hmm. you know you have the music the editing stuff like that you know it's moving yeah. to me it just has has a lot of impact so that's what I, what, what i wanted to do 
And uh, and also simply because you know I you know as I said Steven Spielberg Jim Cameron those guys were my heroes when I was mm -hmm. a kid I used to uh, to watch any type of documentary I could find about them so mm -hmm. I was naturally very much attracted by that uh, it's just that you know once I started to dive into that I realized that okay maybe I, I'm more actually the kind of guy who's gonna just do the visual side of things you know right uh, doesn't mean that I'm not gonna dive into the, the directing thing you know yeah. Uh, I think it's something that will uh, come up to at some point, but uh, it is not anymore my main drive like it used right. to be. I guess right. that sort of evolved over the years, you know. And I guess in the in the age that we're heading into now, with the way tools are, real time rendering, and things like that, um, essentially it's like tools and resources are getting to the point where it's literally like Lego now, where you can just place things, and it's all about vision and direction and bringing it all together. Um, yeah. So, like you know. It, a lot of artists now are starting to make shorts and even longer films or basically small, small, we wouldn't even call indie teams, like even smaller than that, are making projects. So yeah. does that change anything for you at that point in time, seeing these tools and thinking, hey, I could still achieve visions, but with using these tools, or are you still mm -hmm. kind of like putting the directing off to the side for a bit? Um, um, well, going forward. No, I mean, yeah, I still watch all this progress that is made, you know, in the technology. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, now if I wanted to, I can definitely make my own film. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, and it's something I still plan on doing. Um, but, uh, but at the same time, I'm much more now comfortable with the fact that I truly enjoy what I do right now. Nice. You know? yep. And uh, that doesn't need to evolve right now to directing movies. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Um, so, so yeah, but I, I really like uh, how the technology has evolved, you know, and it's crazy because, you know, when I, <laughs> I feel like it's only now that I'm finally starting to get comfortable with my workflow that I learned yeah, and yeah. tried to perfect over the years. And I'm like, oh, uh, now this is completely useless now because yes. all those things have been replaced. And if I put out a tutorial using those tools, nobody will want to buy it anymore because they all want to just use Blender. You know? so, <laughs> so I'm like, yeah. Okay, <laughs> but um, I try not to 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 be too too overwhelmed by that. You know, I think right? It's it's still just tools, you know. Yeah, I mean that's that's definitely true. Um, especially in more so. I mean, I guess like since we both kind of embarked on the creative journey around a similar time, like you know, middle of the last decade, like you know, fourteen, yeah. sixteen, whatever. <laughs> um, tools have gradually improved and increased, and there's always been something new, right? Um, yeah. But it does seem like currently it's kind of been an explosion in certain things, like not just in terms of tools, but what those tools can do and what they can do all by themselves. Um, yeah. So um, have you ever gotten like, say, lost in tools or seduced by tools where it's actually derailed your development? Um, or have you I been always able to keep like a clear vision of what you're trying to achieve and make sure you only get yeah. that out of it? tool has ever derailed me mm. no um you know and i it's funny i feel like all the tools i use uh there's none that i master at all you know whenever mm. i use a tool it's always because i want to do something with it that is already clear in my head you know I, right. I never dive into a new tool just for the sake of learning it you know uh if i dive into a new tool it's because i want to create something that is very precise in my mind and i will just do anything to get there you know even if i don't understand the tool I just trust my eye, you know, I just keep messing with it until I get to the re result I want, you know. Mm. But uh, I feel like I'm not dependent uh, on the tool ever. Probably. Yeah. 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 I mean, like, I think with, with tools now, um, whereas, you know, you had your old cliche question, what brushes do you use? Um, yeah. I guess like what software do you use is kind of becoming that next thing where it's, mm -hmm. it's kind of going to become such a blur where it's, less about what you use it's more about are you able to get your vision across i guess yeah um, yeah and i was thinking about it recently as well like i guess you could apply that to filmmaking because in, in the digital realm was, it's all about these packages and softwares and and all these other add-ons and plugins look at films like you got x amount of cameras so many lenses and all these different things um but then you know you don't hear your favorite directors and cinematographers and what have you really kind of go too crazy on the 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 equipment they used it's always mm -hmm. been about like the story did it come out right the vision and all that kind of stuff yeah, exactly. so it's always about that that stuff in between 
Mm-hmm. I'm actually going, going back to directors. Um, like the people that you mentioned are like, uh, same with so many people, like there's my heroes as well. Um, are you familiar with the Blockbuster podcast? I don't think I am. No, I got, I got to be completely honest. You know, I have not um, followed up, kept up with a lot of podcasts about yeah, art yeah. and films uh, for the past two years. I got to be completely honest because, yeah, I've just been involved in two different things for the past mm-hmm. year. I said about financial things, you know, and art subjects. So I don't know about a lot of podcasts about art right. and films. Yeah. No, I'm I'm the same. It's like there's literally I can count on one hand the things that I regularly listen to. Um mm-hmm. but that particular podcast, although I'm probably a bit not sold on how it's presented, um, mm-hmm. but basically there's there's two seasons so far, I believe. The first season basically focuses on how Steven Spielberg and George Lucas got their first starts, um, mm-hmm. how, how their first films came about. So uh, John Williams gets thrown into that as well because obviously he collaborated heavily with them. But basically, yep. it's about like a little biopic of their journey, their struggles, and surprisingly, mm-hmm. a lot of struggles into making Stephen Stephen with George and George with yeah. Star Wars. Um, yeah. And then the second season is um, about Jim Cameron and cool. how his journey is, and obviously how he made Terminator and what happened there. And because um, you mentioned obviously like that, their inspirations of yours. Whenever you get around to, it, I'll send you a link afterwards. Something mm-hmm. worth worth checking out. Because um, I listen to them whilst working out. Like, I don't like listening to, you know, when I'm working out, just just whatever's around me. I would like to listen to like a podcast or something. Um, yeah. So hearing about them and their journey, firstly, it's quite eye opening because they had, or you know, have as many the same struggles that most people have right now, and they mm-hmm. had to deal with that rejection and failures, yeah. like big failures on a big scale. And maybe back then it's perhaps harder to come back from them. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, yeah. you know, we're talking about three of the most successful people in filmmaking history. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's definitely something I'd recommend worth listening to whenever you get around to it. I'm going to take a look, uh, listen to that, because I actually really like, you know, the, the backstories of George Lucas, Spielberg and all those yeah. guys. You know, I've read, read a lot of books and seen a lot of documentaries about making of Jaws, you know, and mm-hmm. Star Wars. So I really love those old Hollywood stories. What what is it about them? More just like what they what the journey was like, just to get an insight into what was around yeah. it, or is it just more about yeah. just like do you do you really like the kind of behind the scenes stuff? Yeah, I both. I mean, it's just inspiring for me because once again, it's what I used to really enjoy when I was a kid that yeah. really make me dream. So I just love going back to that. You know, um, yeah, it's just like yeah, it's just something I really enjoy, and it just fills me with motivation whenever I go back to that and listen again to those mm. behind the scenes stories you know i just really enjoy that yeah um same and i think one thing about those particular filmmakers and even the list of films that you mentioned there's a lot of like hollywood magic in them in terms of the worlds they bring to life the creatures or the monsters whatever they bring to life like the believability yeah. behind them and then i guess as you get older and you dive into more like with cinematography and all that kind yeah. of stuff like you see the more of how that can influence the story. But when you're younger, it's more about that's cool. That's awesome. Why am I yeah. mesmerized by this? Um, mm-hmm. and, th- and there's something really appealing into like how they made that and even like how much they push for that, because it seems in that particular realm, back to finances, it's all about how can we make this with the least amount of money and not going over budget. And yet mm-hmm. all those dudes that we mentioned went over budget on their films, got to the brink of being fired from their projects and yet yeah, yeah. they made history. Um, so yeah, it's, it's quite interesting. Um, what about non-film stuff? Like what other things inspire you? So you mentioned music, that's something that you actually practice as well mm-hmm. as obviously, I guess, consume as well. Um, films. Yeah, and um, like what, what other things that would you say maybe are not your typical non-art things? Well, they maybe could be typical. Um, but what other things really like fuel you as as a not only a creative but even as a person? Yeah, well, you know, it's I kind of like cars actually. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, even though I would say um, it will never be something I care enough about to, uh, I don't know, to yeah. I mean, I, I like cars. You know, I love the design. I like I love driving them. I like going mm-hmm. fast <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, you know, at the same time, you know, if I got to sell my cars tomorrow for something else more important, I don't care at all. You know, right. it will never be as important yeah. as, uh, you know, 
yeah, more important things, family, friends, you know, and or the art that I, that I do. Cars is just more a hobby, I guess, you know, mm-hmm. something really fun that just uh, just takes my mind off uh, all the rest, I guess, you know, yeah. in a very, you know, chill way, you know, it's like no stress, completely stress-free. So I wouldn't say I'm passionate, but it's just something mm-hmm. I really enjoy doing. Like some people just uh, enjoy, I don't know, it's, it's a hobby, I guess, you know, mm-hmm. but that has no, that I don't really care about more than that, you know, I guess, you know. It's right. kind of funny because I go like to car events and stuff like that, and I'm surrounded by pe- people who are completely passionate about yeah. it, you know. And I, I cannot say I relate to them actually, <laughs> you know. It's fun, <laughs> but I still enjoy being there. But I don't relate to them, you know. I'm not as passionate as they are, you know. Right, the, right. It's a hobby that I really enjoy, but that I actually don't really care about that much. You know, it's funny. <laughs> yeah. And like, do you? But uh, I guess it gets you, gets you off the daily grind and gives you a bit of a break, a mental break from from that and kind of stuff, really right? It, it, a mental break so yeah it's not that it's not important that's very important but mm. it's just something yeah i mean yeah i got a cool car but if i gotta sell it i don't care at all you know <laughs> it's so, just not care at all yeah so back to like workflow what is a typical day like for you uh bu- 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 what is a typical day that's yep. a good question well uh but right now so i'm freelancing from belgium during covid times uh when we cannot do much um, and you cannot see a lot of people. So what I do is just, I wake up, you know, uh, first thing I do is that I try, I don't do it every day. I just try to walk for an hour on my treadmill. Um, then I walk my dog outside <laughs> and then, uh, you know, I get to work, I get in front of the computer and then um, I got a bunch of meetings and I get to work and I try to stop the client work around six or 7 PM mm. depends. Uh, then I go usually see my parents because they're the only people I can sort of see at the moment. They live right. close by, so I'm, I'm happy to go see them. Nice. Uh, and um, yeah, I usually have a meal with them. Then I come back home and I just keep on grinding on personal work, you know, whatever inspires me. So yeah, that's basically what a typical day looks like in Belgium, freelancing during COVID times. <laughs> <laughs> and is that like a Monday to Friday thing or are you like seven days a week nonstop? Uh, client work is uh, five days a week, but mm-hmm. uh, during the weekend, very little changes except that I, I just do personal work all the mm-hmm. time. And when I say personal work, uh, it can just be, you know, listening to podcasts, you know, reading books, uh, just learning a new tool, you know, mm-hmm. whatever, you know, it's not necessarily like a precise project. In fact, you know, uh, I think I really, yeah, I realized an image like yesterday or so, but I, I hadn't done any, completed any personal work in a year and a half. Outside of that, because I had been completely consumed by client. You know, I think you know, I was getting back to freelance for the first time after two years, and I had no idea if I was going to get enough work. So I took on plenty of work, (laughs) and uh, yeah, I worked like a madman for like one year and a half, basically. (laughs) That's like a recurring theme with a number of guests now, Um, and it's like almost a complete absence or radio silence on the personal work side, whilst they're grinding Mm -hmm. hard with, um, you know, like professional work and all that kind of stuff um yeah so how how has that impacted you in any like you know significant way like in a positive way a negative way or has it kind of just been like hey some pause i'll get back to it when i can yeah well i'm gonna be honest i'm still very much in the process of learning to have a good balance Mm. between the client work freelancing you know and personal work life you know it's tough you know Mm -hmm. i've always struggled a lot with that you know Mm. Uh, for example when i work in the studio uh, it's very easy for me to have a healthy routine. Um, you know, I, I eat well, I go to the gym, I sleep enough, you know, it's very easy. Uh, but when I freelance, I know that that's, that's something that can be dangerous for me. You know, um, mm. I tend to, uh, to, uh, to fall into bad habits, you know, uh, and then you know, my health starts to decline, my mental health starts to decline, mm-hmm. you know, and I know that's something I need to, to be careful of. And I knew it when I come back to freelance yeah. a year and a half ago. I knew, okay, Stephen, you got to be careful. You just come back from like two years in a studio where you had a very healthy routine. Everything was yeah. going fine. But now you know that those old demons, they will keep coming back, <laughs> knocking at your door. You know, I know it. I know it very well, you know. So, uh, but so far, I've been able to manage that better than, than I used to. The first months, maybe six months, were still tough, you know. Mm-hmm. I was working way too much, uh, not sleeping enough, not eating healthy, not working out enough. 
Um, but now I'm slowly starting to have a better routine, I guess. You know, mm. uh, you know, you know, I'm getting paid by clients to do the work. I enjoy doing the work, but it yep. doesn't mean I have to work 20 hours for them. That's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. That's not what I'm getting paid for. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm not going to overwork and just like settle unrealistic expectations. You know, buying over delivering work. You know, it's got to be realistic. Yeah. So uh, if I've worked like eight hours per day for my client, well, that's what they're paying me for, and there's no reason why I should keep on going for ten more hours and not sleeping. You know. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. So. I got to have this discipline to, okay, now I stop, you know, and I take the time to, to uh, take care of myself. I go see my parents, I work out, you know, I just chill. Uh, there's no reason why I cannot do that, you know? And um, yeah, but uh, it's just much more difficult. And it's even more difficult during COVID times when I cannot see any of my friends. Yeah. So that's, that's very difficult for me. I'm not going to lie, you know? Uh, but, you know, I'm glad to say I have more discipline than I used to. So I'm, able to balance all that a bit better than I've done it in the past for sure. It's not so, perfect. But hopefully I'm getting there. When you first started, like you said, back to freelancing world, what was it in particular, or was there anything specific in particular that really caused you to um have that kind of like um not optimal routine and like being overworked and all that kind of stuff? Was there anything particular that was causing that? Yeah. I just, it's, it's a fact probably of just being alone in an office that is right. also next to my bedroom. You know, I think it's just <laughs> that really, it's just, uh, you know, I do acknowledge that I probably just lack discipline there, you know, mm-hmm. um, it's tough, you know, for me to, to, to mentally have that discipline to, to keep a healthy lifestyle. If I'm not surrounded by a lot of people, I guess, you know, mm. uh, yeah, the, the lack of social interactions is just difficult, you know? If I work in a studio, for example, I my mind is completely occupied by by things, you know, and I'm not thinking about anything else. You know, I just mm-hmm. speak to people, I do my work, and uh, there's never a temptation to have like an extra meal or to stop working or just to sit on the couch, you know, something like that. Um, and uh, since there's always action interactions in the studio, I also don't have time to think mm-hmm. about unhealthy things. You know what I mean? Mm. Uh, so my mind is in a much more, uh, sane state, I guess, <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, but I know that whenever I get back to freelance and work alone from home, well, all those bad thoughts start coming back and yeah, it's just more, more difficult to manage, you know, that, that's pretty much it really. Yeah. I think it's quite important. Um, and a good point you make is that, um, like you mentioned demons, right. And these bad habits is, yeah. although you can conquer them you can never delete them, right? Like they they can all, yeah. they're always waiting to come back and always waiting to like, you know, tear shit yeah. apart. Um, so like, and it's, it's quite good to hear that um, it's something that A, you re- you're able to recognize because some people are unable to recognize it as well. Um, and then B, um, you have worked and working on to try and like have a process and a structure to ensure that that never comes back. Um, yeah. Was that something that was kind of like, naturally occurred to you um whilst you were like you know educating yourself on the issue was that was there something specific or did was there ever a point where you got to the point where like okay i really need to like kind of get on top uh, of this because it's getting out of control i've educated myself you know as i said just by reading stuff about mm. everything and personal experience also i've had you know uh that's when i started to recognize you know patterns you know yeah and yeah. stuff i could relate to and uh yeah, I had to take a look in the mirror and recognize, okay, that's not right, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. You got to fix that, you know. Uh, that's why you're falling again in those bad habits, you know, and this is how you can fix it. So yeah. don't lie to yourself, you know. Uh, this is you right now, you know. You're one of those person. You need to fix this by doing this, 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 you know. It's not easy to have that, this discipline, you know, but uh, you got to have it, you know. And uh, yeah, so all about finding a process, you know, to to keep your mind in the, in the same state, you know, it's difficult, but uh, yeah, you can overcome that, you know, or at least you can, you can manage it, I guess. Yes. You know? But so many artists struggle with that, you know, and so it's many, just yeah. more difficult when you freelance or, and especially during COVID times, you know. And uh, I wouldn't even say it goes beyond, I think it's just like a human condition because there's um, friends that I know that are not in the art space in completely different, um, you know, like industries and similar kind of traits, especially yeah. since, um, Whereas like most artists either in a studio or they're freelance and there's really never an in-between. Um, whereas everybody else has kind of been in an institution, in a building, a brick and mortar place. 
And mm-hmm. since the pandemic, 90% of people have had to kind of work from home and work yep. in an environment that you could say artists are kind of have been somewhat familiar to. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, that, they've, they've been struggling with similar things as well. Um, yeah. But then on the flip side, um, what good habits do you have? Good habits that I have. <laughs> uh, I think a good habit I have, as I said, is I go see my parents every day and I spend yeah. time with them. That's something I really enjoy because, you know, uh, I've been gone for a few years. As I said, I was living in the UK, you know. Uh, but now I think a good habit that I have is that I I spend more time with them and also spend more time, uh, as I said, chilling a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Spend a lot of time. I spend a lot of time with my dog, but I think is very healthy. Uh, because unfortunately, when I was yeah living in the UK, um, I mean, he was with me when I was in Scotland, but I was still working in his studio all day long. But now he's with me every day, you know, mm-hmm. and I just go walk him, you know. Uh, two or three times a day and i think that's a very healthy habit i just go walk in the woods you know stuff like that nice and uh yeah just keep reading that's also a good habit picked up you know um yeah and um, i work more also, also you know it's, it, it has been right. difficult yeah. to get back to it as i said while freelancing but uh i don't do it enough yet yeah. but I, I never let a week go without working out so that's right, already right, right. forward that's i think good. you know that's good um because yeah like some people have like not even a week, a year without working out. Um, I know mm-hmm. I would have been down that path and it got yeah. really messy. Um, mm-hmm. So like at the moment you're based in Belgium, right? And that's where you grew up. Is that correct? Um, actually, I was born in the US and right. I grew up uh, in the US when I was young. Ah, I see. But, I see. but I moved to Belgium when I was still uh, a kid. Okay. So uh, I grew up mostly in Belgium and a little bit in the US, yeah. And so basically it's home, right? It's pretty much yeah. home where you. Yeah, Belgium yeah. is home. Yeah. yeah, pretty much. Is that where you want to like stay right now? Um, as a freelancer, at least you want to be based there, or are you somebody who perhaps when things go up and up, you be open to moving around a little bit? Well, that's an interesting question. You know, uh, if you had asked me this question like just two years ago, I would have been, you know, I want to move uh, away from Belgium. I want to mm-hmm. keep traveling. Uh, now I'm actually, you know what? I actually, uh, kind of like Belgium, at least where I live now. Uh, I didn't really enjoy the other places I was living in in Belgium, but I right. actually really enjoy the place I am now. But also realize that uh, being based in Belgium, that's only what it means. It doesn't mean that I cannot travel, that I cannot work six months in another country if I want to. So I think ideally I want to be based in Belgium, freelance from here, but still be open to mm-hmm. work uh, for a few months somewhere else. You know, uh, I would be open to that and I would probably enjoy that for sure. Nice. So, um, your creative journey officially, I guess you could say, in terms of where it became your career, started in twenty fourteen. When mm-hmm. did you get your first job? Um, ba, 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 ba. you know, I, I think I started pretty early getting like small jobs, not really nice. from studios, but from you know, independents who mm-hmm. needed like a concept artist or a mad painter to work on their short film. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess, you, yeah, those were my first jobs. So I actually had them in maybe six months in oh, wow. like, cool. and 14, something like that. But as I said, you know, um, I was able to do a pretty, not, maybe not easy, but um, faster than usual transition to matte painting because I sort of knew Photoshop and I had some skills manipulating photos. So mm-hmm. I was able to get out matte paintings, you know, fairly quickly after a few months of practice, you know. Mm. And uh, so that led me to have like first small jobs, like yeah, a few months in. Um, but I guess my first serious job for a studio was more like in 2017, probably. Okay. Yeah. And what was mm-hmm. that job? Uh, so that was for a commercial for Mercedes Benz, where I did some matte painting. So that nice. was very early 2017. And uh, yeah, I think that I consider that to be my first real professional gig. I think. Yeah. And. If you can remember back to that time, like, A, what was it like when you first got that job? Um, mm-hmm. Like, I guess it's essentially your big break, I guess you could say. Um, uh, sort of. I mean, I wasn't right. seeing that team like that actually back in the day because ah, all I, I had in mind at that time was to <laughs> to work on a film, on a big film. Sure. That's okay. what I wanted. Got it. So working on a commercial was very cool, but it wasn't my goal. So mm-hmm. I considered it like a, a step forward. But ah, okay. I wasn't considering that my big break for some reason, you know? So what would you um, consider your big break? 
Well, to me, you know, uh, once again, it's going to be cliche, but it's when I, I got to ILM and I got to work on Jurassic World. That's yeah. because, you know, that's what really was fueling my motivation. You know, you know, when I was a kid, I used to watch the Jurassic Park documentaries, yep. ILM, you know, documentaries. Like, oh my God, I really want to do that. And when I decided I wanted to to work in art so in 2014, that was my goal. You know, okay, mm. I want to be at ILM, you know, and I want, want to work on one of those movies. That's what really one I would love to do. Sick. So, uh, I guess that was really what I would consider my my break at that point. Yeah. How did the opportunity come about? Um, well, I guess it started with me doing the Island Challenge back in 2016. Oh, yes. That's okay. uh, I guess that is sort of what brought me to the attention of people at ILM, you know? Yeah. Um, and, you know, I had some interactions with them over the next years through industry events, you know, and people I knew. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I had a few calls with them. Uh, and then it was just a matter of like uh, finding the right time that was working for them. And for me, that's how I got the job. You know, it just goes very quickly when they need somebody, uh, a recruiter will reach out to you. That's what happened. And I was available right away. So yeah, mm-hmm. in a matter of like two, three days, I flew to London and that was it. Yeah. Sick. And so at that point in time, it's essentially ticked off that big you know, checkbox in your yes. um, mm-hmm. career path of like the studio, the title, um, you know, like the ILM is legendary. I mean, that's the stuff that you grew up, it's a place you should grew up studying, um, admiring, and then now you're actually working there. Um, mm-hmm. Did that derail you in any way or was it gave you extra more focus and motivation or is it a case of when, you, when you're on a job, um, all of that kind of emotion goes out the window and it's all about getting the task at hand complete? Uh, yeah, when I was at ILM, I was not thinking at all about, oh my God, I'm at ILM. This is mm. amazing. You know, I was just completely focused on the job also because I was extremely stressed out because I wanted to do a good job, you know, mm. so I worked really, really hard. Um, but, uh, yeah, but you know, I, I never celebrate like victories, you know, <laughs> I just, mm. I'm just like that. Whenever I achieve something, you wouldn't know it by the look on my face. <laughs> I'm super happy, but I'm, I'm like already thinking about what's next, you know, right, right. Um, so, uh, so yeah, you know, right away I was like, okay, what's next, you know? And, uh, yeah. <laughs> and what was next? Uh, well, I guess, you know, my goal after ILM, you know, cause I said, that's the way I personally function. I need to have goals. I just mm. I have a hard time functioning properly without that. So I guess what I wanted to do next, cause this was my first experience, you know, on a really big studio, big movie as a VFX artist, right? And I guess what I, what I wanted to explore next, okay, what is it to now be uh, a concept artist on something very big where you work directly with the director? That's also something that I really used to make me dream. So mm-hmm. uh, this time, this wouldn't be like the studio experience where you're just in a team you know, and you just speak to your supervisor. No, now I want it really to be like in the room with the producers, with the directors and just make a movie. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And uh, if possible, as a concept artist. So that was... Uh, the next goal I was looking forward to. And uh, thankfully, that's something uh, I've been able to do uh, recently. I cannot talk about it, but it's something I uh, cannot talk about it yet. But uh, it's something I've been uh, able to do. So pretty happy about that too. Sick. Um, and what was it like working at, uh, how did the access opportunity come about? Because you were there for quite some time, right? Yeah, that's a good question as well. Um, so back in 2017, so summer 2017, that's when I, uh, I met the guys from Axis. Uh, I think it was at IFCC in Croatia. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, and then uh, I, I got to visit the studio. You know, we discussed a uh, few opportunities and I finally got to work with them uh, at the end of 2017 on the Destiny 2 cinematic. And uh, since then, you know, I'm extremely happy uh, to, to work with them. We have a good working relationship. I love the work they do, I love the people very much. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so I've worked with them freelance a bunch of times, and I also went there as an employee for a, a whole year. So yeah, sick. I mean, Axis does seem like a really great place to work. From what I've seen under as an outsider, um, mm. and whoever I've spoken to about them, they just seem to say super positive things. Yeah, I mean, I, I really like that studio. You know, it's uh, uh, I really love working there. You know, and um, you know, I don't see as I as I said, I see myself now working as a freelance, but <laughs> if there's one place uh, I will still always be happy to go back to, it's definitely Access. Nice. Um, I mean, that, that also like puts value and shows like value in 
how to nurture and even just like make the most of and even recognize like good relationships with not just clients, employees, and just even like yeah. fellow creatives. Um, like, yeah. is that something that's important for you? Um, because I guess that you've had like the full spectrum where it was like, you know, you can have some clients that are maybe not so positive versus the ones that are just a complete dream. Like, mm-hmm. or have you been quite lucky and everything's kind of been plain sailing? Um, every, yeah, I've always only had good experience so far, good, good. Uh, luckily. And, um, uh, I would say, yeah, to me, have like a good working relationship is always more important. You know, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter the project. I wouldn't want to work on it if uh, it wasn't a good human experience as well. That's for sure. Uh, but yeah, I've been lucky to pretty much only have really good experiences. Uh, but on the other hand, you know, I got to also admit that um, if we take a look like at my IMD- IMDB page, I don't have a lot of credits because I've actually focused a lot on doing personal work. Right. And uh, I haven't done that much, you know, client work. I mean, I've do, I'm doing much more right now. I've done a lot of stuff that is not out there yet, but I've done a lot of stuff. But during the first years, you know, I've I've done mostly client work, uh, personal work, and uh, mm-hmm. only done some client work. So, yeah, I'm definitely not the kind of people because some people follow that journey as well. They just enter a studio and then they're like a, on a different project every month then they move to another studio mm-hmm. and after five years they've worked like on, like on like dozens of movies and games so i'm definitely not uh in that type of situation so mm. yeah and i mean but i guess it's like it also shows that even in the the realm that we're in right now like it, you're still able to forge a career that suits i guess your own traits and personalities right like there's never like a rigid pathway that one has to follow you kind of can make it your own would you say yeah definitely uh and i would encourage everybody to to make your own path if you can so it's sometimes tricky to, mm. to balance because very often you know i was like okay what i really want to do is like work at ilm uh but then again this company is offering me like a one-year contract but i don't really want to work there in that country on those projects so what do i do do i accept it because it's still an opportunity or do i keep focused on my goal you know mm. so uh it was a bit hard to to balance, but um, in the end, I think I stayed pretty much focused on my own path and own journey. And uh, yeah, I, I don't regret it. So yeah. So after embarking on the journey to become a professional and then becoming a bona fide professional, um, mm-hmm. you've also gone into the realm of educating, and obviously you've got a course with us, three D uh, map painting. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Like how was how was that like sharing your knowledge? Um, because I guess. From back in 2014, you was on the other side of the the screen, so to say, where he was absorbing yeah. knowledge and trying to apply that to then now being the person that that um, you know like um yeah. provides that knowledge and and all that kind of stuff. Like how how was that journey? Uh, pretty interesting because once again, it's something that I I never ever thought about when I got into art that I would mm-hmm. be at some point teaching stuff. You know, something. Oh, you want me to teach? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I could do that. Why not? You no. Know? Uh, but it's just been very rewarding, you know. I'm uh, I'm just always extremely humbled when uh, people take what I teach to do their own stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm almost like, you sure you want to follow my advice? Because <laughs> you know, I, I suck, man. You really want to <laughs> hear what I have to say? But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm super glad I, I did it. You know, it's been very rewarding, and I love seeing what students do with the course, you know, and uh, a, few, a few other tutorials I put out there. So yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, I mean, like the the students' work just says it all. Like, for mm-hmm. example, even even what you teach in the course, um, it, it's really solid. Like in in a way, like just to grasp it, it's super solid. Like I I haven't completed the course in terms of like making a project for it, but there's a mm-hmm. lot of things that I've just like taken and used in different things. Like a, a little snippet yeah. there, that little approach there. Um, mm-hmm. even even certain philosophies in the way you do things it's like you know just hijack those and use them somewhere else um yeah but then like with the students that have actually taken the course just looking at the homework gallery itself it's like there's just so many cool things that come out of it yeah i'm pretty happy about it because you know i was a bit stressed out because you know as i said i'm not the most technical guy out there but i wanted to do a course that just uh would give the student the ability to do like a cool looking shot for their own yeah. short film or something like that you know and uh, so that's why I don't expand that much on all the techniques that I use. And uh, I'm sure some professionals would say, man, this is, this sucks. You know? <laughs> <laughs> because I do some stuff that is just like not super, you know, um, uh, you can see I'm not mastering completely every tool I use. Right. Uh, it's about getting the result out there, mm-hmm. you know, 
and I guess that's what I, I wanted to to convey with this course. You know, it's just uh, a bunch of techniques, you know, used together to create just something cool, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, after all, it's like just an, an example of a workflow, right? To achieve a goal. And I guess yeah. even in this industry, there's like how many different workflows to achieve one thing. Um, yeah. But like, is um like how many shots have you made? Was that a workflow that you were using prior to making the course or something that you're still using now? Uh, it was very much a workflow I was using at that point. Mm-hmm. Uh, big shots. Because I think when I did the course, I was working at Axis. Mm-hmm. on mostly uh, game cinematics and it's very much that workflow that i use to do all my shots mm. uh, today uh, my workflow has still evolved especially with new tools coming so it is definitely more uh what's the word <laughs> efficient right now i would right, say right uh, but it's still very much the same philosophy you know mm. i just take whatever tool i need to get the result i want you know and i don't need to be a master of every tool i learn true very true um and like Going back to even the the NFT topic we touched upon earlier, um, mm-hmm. you know, like even even some of the some I, I haven't like really seen everything that's out there, but obviously I, I've been reading up enough to know what's going on with the whole realm. Um, yeah. But even like people who are maybe looking to embark on their own NFT journey or release some of their own yeah. stuff, you know, there's a lot of animated things, uh, a lot of things that are like you know like are are quite like look like shots as well. Um, mm-hmm. This this course is great to assist in that that field but like mm-hmm. even talking upon nfts themselves it, mm-hmm. I, I don't want to put you on the spot and make you commit to a certain viewpoint because even me with my my mindset in the space of like even days sometimes i'd have one emotion about it to a different one back to another one back to the first one and so yeah. forth because it's so new but what's your overall take on it and is it something that you are maybe in looking to or have already embarked on? Uh, I guess my view on it has been evolving for the past weeks, months. Uh, I'm not going to lie. At first, I was just as stressed as anybody else. (laughs) I was like, oh my God, I got to jump on this train right now. This is my chance. This is my opportunity, you know? Um, Because as I said, I was prior to that, I was uh, when, when it all blew up with people prior to that, I was still in this mindset when I was doing my client work and that I really enjoyed that I kept doing. I was pretty happy to do that. But on the side, I wasn't doing that much personal work. I was mm-hmm. more looking into avenues to develop more sources of income, learn about business. And I was kind of lost. You know, I didn't know exactly which way to go. Mm-hmm. So when I saw that blowing, I was like, oh my God, this is it. Now I can make, I see, can simply make money and possibly a lot of it with just my personal work. So I got to mm-hmm. jump on it now. Absolutely. And, um, it was stressing me a lot, uh, you know, because uh, I, I was already very busy with client work, but still then during the night, I was like, we got to learn an NFT thing, <laughs> set up a wallet. Like everybody <laughs> else, I was completely stressed out about it, you know. And then you also had like the whole thing about the environment issues, like, oh, I don't know what to think, what to do, you know. Mm. <laughs> and uh, now I'm I'm a bit more chill about it now. I'm like, okay, you know what? Uh, focus on the art, man. Uh, mm. Just art that you enjoy. So I did mine three pieces of mine they're out there if they sell awesome if they don't i really don't care mm-hmm. um you know it's making money it's not my goal right now my goal right now is just to do art and art i care about mm-hmm. and uh you know if somebody then wants to buy it then awesome you know so i would say yeah if you want to jump on the nft thing uh yeah i mean just try it out but uh don't be stressed out about it. I know that people <laughs> made like thousands of millions, but you know, I mean, you don't have to do the same thing, you know, just do your own thing. Don't start to change your art just to make money, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and there's nothing wrong, by the way, with selling out, you know, that's fine, you know, but uh, as long as you still like what you do. Um, so, yeah, it's just don't be too stressed out about it, you know. Mm. Hopefully, it's something that is there to stay. Um, so yeah, don't be too caught up in the gold rush thing, you know, mm-hmm. uh, you might want to jump on it, you know, sooner than later for sure. Uh, but yeah, don't, don't stress out about it. I would say, you know, do you think it's here to stay? I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I really don't know. I feel like, uh, there's been like a whole gold rush thing. And I think this is definitely going to fade. Uh, right. this is going to stay. Uh, so this is going to stabilize. I also think that probably, um, the whole thing about buying NFTs just to resell, that's all also going to slow down probably. Mm-hmm. And uh, I feel like in the end, it's going to be 
like getting into any kind of field. You know, it's gonna you're gonna have to kind to put the same kind of effort to mm. break in as in any other field, basically. If you want to break into the NFT scene, well, you will just need to put the same kind of effort you put into breaking into the VFX industry. Mm. That's what I think. Um, but yeah, we'll see. I, you know, I'm not an expert, so sure. it's my opinion, but I, I could be completely wrong. So don't yeah. take my word for it for sure. <laughs> um, I mean, like it is, it is quite equally fascinating and equally strange, at least from my perspective, just because of, yeah. like, on one hand, as someone who creates, it's like, oh, cool, this is something that. I can see an advantage of directly, in, at least in the financial sense, and yeah, in the sense of that, it's just a direct line between my work and earnings, as opposed to my work to get hired to then earn some money and then all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, but then obviously, like you mentioned, there's all these other aspects to it, and then there's a lot, of, there's so much noise around it, and it's mm-hmm. it's difficult to perhaps sometimes get some clarity if someone's looking for that. At the same yeah. time, like you mentioned, there's you know. If you if you've done your research and there's still enough where you can actually research properly um, and basically t- take a punt, so to, so to speak, so you know, have, have a yeah. little have a little place to see what it's like. There's no harm in that either. Mm-hmm. But then on the on the flip side, you know, it's like even even my friends who know what I do, they kind of don't know what I do. Yet they were messaging me like, "Oh, do you know about NFTs? Are you going to start selling some NFTs?" So it's almost like. It, if like you know the the vocabulary now of what digital artist does mm-hmm. is now like at least in some circles in in the in the more common space where people think everybody who uses Photoshop is just a graphics designer, um, mm-hmm. so you know at least it's kind of brought attention to that space and whether that transforms into mm-hmm. more money for people or just more exposure for people, um, yeah. who knows where that will end up in turn? But at least it's kind of like put digital art. Um, even though I just see it as art, it, but you know, people have to put labels on things. Um, you know, yeah. like like this particular realm on the map, and that is something valuable. Um, mm-hmm. and then it's quite amusing to see certain people throw shade on it, certain people to give too much importance to it. Um, mm-hmm. so yeah, it's, it's quite funny overall. Um, but then at the same time, you know, it is, it just shows that anything can come around the corner. I mean, yeah, last year COVID showed it in a negative sense. Um, mm-hmm. But then potentially in a positive sense, although, you know, it's like not, not everybody, well, nobody, not, like, it's clear that nobody's going to make people money, except yeah. th- otherwise that wouldn't be such a headline if, you know, everybody yeah. made like, you know, 70 odd million or even millions. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, it also shows that like, I guess with what people has done, like with what his journey was always about and what he was putting his work out for was never, it was never a commercial thing. You could yeah, see exactly. like it was always an expression, a journey and whatever it was in terms of, you know, I don't want to speak for him. Um, but then for that to be priced and given a value, um, you know, that, that's quite profound. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, uh, yeah, I mean, when I look at people, you know, and the other guys who make like made really big money, you know, when I look at that, I'm like, okay, you know, what is paying off is really like a lot of dedication to mm-hmm. something they really cared about. That's what I see, you know. Um, so that's what pays off in my opinion. It just happens that in this time it pays off with the NFT thing, but, uh, it would have probably paid off with something else if it wasn't yeah, for that. True. You know, that's the way I see it. Yeah. I mean, like, I mean, about it's 15 years of journey is so far and that's, that's just yeah. his everyday just journey, his not his commercial journey and his career journey and whatever else. Right. So, you yeah, know, I mean, this kind of dedication is just mind blowing to me. I just, yeah. yeah, just, yeah. I just still cannot cannot wrap my mind around that man. <laughs> just completely crazy. Yeah. I know, totally. Um, yeah. so go. Uh, twenty twenty two is well. It's not just here. It's kind of like fast moving. And uh, twenty twenty one. Sorry, this year. I'm already getting confused with the years. Um, you know, we're already past three months into the year. We're into the fourth month. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what's this year looking like for you? Like, what what does the future hold? At least in the short term. Yeah. Well, this year is gonna be um a bit more chill when it comes to client work. So uh, I got to work for the whole year, but you know, it's going to be like normal hours. Right. So I'm pretty happy about that. So that means I'm going to have more time to dedicate, dedicate to other things that I want to do. So new personal work projects, uh, probably dive a little bit, as I said, into like the film and animation thing. So expand mm-hmm. my knowledge. You know, I really want to learn new stuff at this point and uh, really dedicate time to you, like art. I care, really care about your know, personal stuff. Mm-hmm. And, um, and also, um, yeah, on our topics, you know, just buy a house, you know, and settle, you know, 
just try to, uh, yeah, to make progress in life, I guess. <laughs> That's it. And any, anything we can look forward to in terms of like any releases of any kind or. Oh, man, like I really, there's so much stuff that is supposed to come out, but I still cannot talk about pretty much any, any of it, unfortunately. That's the best uh, kind of tease. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, man, I've, you know, you know, I've not released any personal work except yesterday in like a year and a half. And, uh, it's because I've done a lot of client stuff, you know, uh, that is still completely under wraps, but, um, mm-hmm. Hopefully, uh, they will start to come out sooner or later. I have no idea when. Uh, obviously, COVID, you know, has probably delayed a lot of projects. But uh, but yeah. Uh, so in terms of, of professional work, I really cannot say anything mm-hmm. because I have no idea. But uh, I think in terms of personal work, I'm, yeah, I'm going to start to dive into new things and experiment with new techniques, new workflows, new type of art, I think. That's what I'm going to do. And hopefully, if I have time to doubt, uh, another course out there. I don't know when or what it's gonna be, but uh, uh, it's something I might start to work on at some point. Sweet. And just one final thing before we wrap up: Is there anything you're particularly looking forward to that's coming out this year? Uh, I'm definitely looking forward to to be able to go back to movies. <laughs> well, yes, definitely. <laughs> and that's something I miss, and also to art events because I really miss uh, my friends from the community. You know, so uh, that's something I would love. I mean, I'm not sure it's gonna happen in. 2021 but uh hopefully it's gonna happen next year then um but yeah and yeah just very much looking forward also to to take on uh all the new learn square classes uh, i've seen so there's a bunch i want to take for sure so hopefully i will have time to do that looking forward to see what you cook up dude yeah thanks man thanks very much steven uh thanks for your time always a pleasure um pleasure is mine thank you very much for having me and thanks to uh anybody listening and uh yeah you all soon hopefully a huge thanks to Stephen for joining me today be sure to check out his learn squared course 3d map painting and remember the first lesson is free also check out the links below and see what Stephen's been up to and give him a follow i've been your host aaron danda till next time